Even if you're not an ultralight backpacker, I promise there's gonna be gear in this video you're gonna like. Now the gear we're gonna talk about in this video is some gear upgrades, as well as some really nice comfort additions to your loadout. We're gonna start with something that can add a lot of comfort as well as save some weight. This is a 2.5 mil, 350 pound braking strength cordage. Got a really nice reflective tracer inside so you can see it at night, which is really, really nice. 10 foot chunk of this, or like a six foot six chunk, is 0.3 ounces or 10.6 grams, so really, really lightweight stuff. This stuff is awesome for replacing guy lines on your tents, like I did recently. The front tie out on my Tarp Tent Pro Trail Lithium. Uh, the original one I just found was a little bit too short, and I didn't really think of any practical way I was gonna use it, so I just added a longer piece of guy line to the front. I was actually able to save myself a little bit of weight by going with an even longer piece of guy line at the front because the loss and glow wire is lighter than what was originally on the Tarp Tent. And not just for my tents, I use this exact same cordage for all the guy outs on my tarps for my hammocks as well. For number two, the very first thing I'm gonna say about the Flextail Tiny Pump is it is 100% worth the like 100 gram weight penalty or 3.4 ounces, I believe it is. If you don't know what the Tiny Pump is, well, uh, it's tiny and it's a pump. This is a portable electric air pump for your air pad. It comes with a whole bunch of different attachments. There's way more than these. These are just a couple that I grabbed here. But you find whatever attachment piece is gonna match up with your air pad. You click it onto the pump, you hit the power button twice, and you can just walk away and let your air pad fill up. A uh, really, really nice thing to have. Having a regular size sleeping pad, I was able to get 29 fills on one charge of the Flextail Tiny Pump. It also has a floodlight, which is really, really nice. Uh, super handy and just nice to have inside your shelter. Even a little ring on the bottom so you can hang it from something when you got the light going. I'll fully admit when I first got the Tiny Pump, I really wasn't sure I was gonna like it or use it at all. But uh, this is one of those pieces of gear that really, really grew on me. And even in my hard dive into ultralight, I've been able to shave a little bit of weight in other areas of my pack so I can carry this as a comfort slash luxury with me when I'm out on trail. Another use for the Tiny Pump I literally just thought of now, uh, I'm sure that I could probably take one of the little nozzle adapters, stick it on there, and then use this to blow air into a fire and kind of stoke a fire and get that going. I bet you it would work for that. At number three, we're gonna talk about the Flextail Tiny Repel. And no, Flextail is not sponsoring this video. These are just two really, really awesome, innovative pieces of gear that I have really, really enjoyed using. 5.2 ounces or 147 grams is not quite as lightweight as the Tiny Pump, but compared to its competitor, which is the Thermocell Backpacker, which comes in at 114 grams, and this is it. This is all you need for it to work. It's got a battery inside. You don't need to screw this on top of a fuel can like you would the Thermocell Backpacker. It's got a couple different temperature settings. Uh, personally, I can't really tell a difference between the effectiveness of each temperature setting. I will say it does work very well. For uh, battery life, I get anywhere from like seven and a half to nine and a half hours of battery life out of this thing. A cool little carabiner hook at the top or at the bottom. It's also got a thread so you can screw it onto like a tripod if you want to just have it mounted sitting somewhere. And because it seems like that's Flextail's thing, it's also got a light on it too. A cool little feature to have. It's nice to have dangling in your camp. It's almost kind of like a little lantern. The Tiny Repel is probably something that I'm going to keep more for family backpacking trips. Uh, my son is getting to the age where we're starting to, you know, get him venturing out and starting to take him on little backpacking trips. And uh, this is definitely gonna be a staple on our family trips. Shock cord has a ton of different uses and just a ton of different things you can upgrade and make better in your backpacking gear loadout. A lot of people use shock cord on their tarps for their hammock setups, especially with a Dyneema tarp. Shock cord is just gonna take a little bit of that tension out of the line and it's gonna be a little bit less wear and tear and a little bit less stress put on your tarp. Instead of using a stuff sack for their pot, a lot of people will use a piece of shock cord to kind of keep the lid of their pot and keep all their pot contents contained. This is something I tried doing at one point, but uh, just wasn't for me, but it does work really well for a lot of people. Friend Nathan uses a little loop of shop cord on his shoulder straps to help keep a little extra security on his inReach when he's out on trail. It's probably something I'm actually gonna do myself going forward. I just, I like that idea of just, you know, a little bit of extra security around a very vital piece of gear when you're out in the backcountry. Modification I recently did on my ULA Ohm backpack is I've replaced the side compression straps with shock cord. For the most part, I don't really store anything on the side of my bag unless I'm out backpacking with my dog. And I wanna start carrying her sleeping pad on the side of the pack. So I'm gonna give the shock cord a go as just a way of securing her little bedroll to the side of my bag instead of having it across the top. For years, I actually used to just throw 
my full size wallet that I would carry in my pocket. I would just throw that in my gear loadout and I would just carry that with me on backpacking trips. And then I kind of made the transition to carrying like a credit card, my license and a little bit of cash inside of a little Ziploc bag. And that worked great for me for a number of years. I got a hole in the Ziploc bag that I was using to store my wallet. And I thought, hey, instead of using another single use plastic, I'm gonna go out and get myself one of those little Dyneema trail wallets. This one is from Hartford Gear Company. It weighs 0.2 ounces. Very, very simple design. Like most trail wallets, it's got a little zipper at the front. You've got a couple little tabs at the side. So if you wanna attach this to like a little mini beaner and clip this somewhere in your pack. What I really like about this is like before, I'm gonna put my credit card, my license, my little bit of cash, but I can also put my keys inside here. And then, like I mentioned, you know, put a little tiny beaner. Like I've got a couple little really lightweight titanium beaners and I'm gonna just clip this somewhere on the inside of my bag where it's not gonna run away. And uh, just know that all of that important stuff is nice and secure and it's all together and not spread into different areas of my backpack. Now, unfortunately, that's all the new ultralight gear I have for you in this video. But thankfully, I have shot a bunch of different videos on ultralight backpacking gear. I will link a couple of them right here for you to check out. So when you're done with this video, head on over to either of those. I'm sure you'll enjoy. And as always, I'm Maddie. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you on the next one.